Hey guys, welcome to another video by Fully Informed Trade or Fi Trade for short. My name is Alex and I'm just going to go ahead and review the stock, commodity, bond, and forex market. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into data and review the dollar index first. We got some support at around $79 and uh, I pretty much mentioned yesterday, I think, that if you're going to go ahead and buy into this, be sure to set up a stop that's a little bit further out because there's going to be this tail jutting out below $79 and you already see that and you're, you're already seeing that right now. Um, if we can find some support and continue going a bit higher, that should derail those overall markets from continuing going a bit higher. But some names will continue going higher because their earnings have not uh, come out yet. So overall, there's some there's a great chance of finding support here. If not, you're going to find some support here. Um, set up some reasonable stops. Be sure to um, be sure to uh, set a stop in mind. For these tails that kind of jut out below the 79 support level. Let's go ahead and look at the next chart, which is going to be the Dow Jones Industrial Average. If you can go ahead and zoom back a little bit, you got a trend line at around 2007, um, I don't know, 2008 July or something like that. And pretty much you got this trend line going all the way back here to here. And that's pretty much a res and we got a resistance somewhere, somewhere close to around 11,867. Uh, 11, so. I feel that this market will have some trouble breaking the 11,867 barrier. So that's going to be pretty much a couple hundred, a hundred points or so, or 75 to 100 points left in this market before we find some major resistance. Let's go ahead and look at the next chart, which is going to be the XAU USDO. And this is a call that I made a couple days ago. I pointed out that we're going to have there's going to be a pretty good possibility that there's going to be a pullback by Thursday or something or early next week, but we had this pullback a bit early on Thursday. We have a head and shoulder pattern. It couldn't break above the 20-day moving average, so head and shoulder, head and shoulder. So you got double head and shoulder, top that with an A pattern, and we're breaking right back into the reasonable area that I would anticipate a market to be trading in. So it's pretty much broken the trend line on the multi-year trend on the upper lip of the trend and because of that we can go ahead and anticipate the markets to go a bit lower somewhere around 1300 and find some support around 1260 but if but over a longer period of time this trend line will extend and go a little bit higher so we can anticipate that future is a support level could be 1280 instead but overall it'd be much more prudent for investors especially long-term investors to wait for this market to pull back and anticipate somewhat of a support right around 1280 let's go ahead and look at the next chart which is going to be the XAG USDO and that's the silver market or the silver forex market or what others call it silver spot and uh, pretty much we got this market doing the same exact story I pointed out the head and shoulder pattern I think yesterday and a couple days ago head shoulder shoulder you got this market trading below the multi-year trend line and then you got a pyramid pattern on top of an A pattern you got this A pattern right here head, head and shoulder uh, market trading below the multi-year trend line right up here another another uh, then you got a six month trend line that is also broken under as well and because of that I can't really find a diagonal support line that I do like but we can anticipate a market to trade below twenty six dollars into the twenty two fifty uh, range so that should be our range this is going to be our pyramid um, and pretty much the worst the worst this market could ever fall is nineteen dollars and uh, 90 cents but if we but over a longer period of time that'll eventually turn to like 21 or 22 dollars because as you can tell these diagonal trend lines do extend out into the future and they do have a slope and that slope is pointing upwards you know have an upward slope uh, three or four months from now that uh, line will be at a higher level somewhere around 21 to maybe 22 dollars so because of that I anticipate some support at around but you know and realistically uh, the golden area for us, for longer term silver traders or buyers, is going to be 26 to 22.50. Um, and if you're a silver forex or a silver futures trader, since you have more leverage, you have to look for a definitive uh, support or a reversal indicator. And I'm going to point that out in the coming weeks or months ahead. Let's go ahead and look at the next chart, which is going to be the bond market. Bond market continues to trade in this range. Of around 122 to around 119, and I continue, and I and I can see it continuing that way. But we have this head and shoulder pattern, and once you have a head and shoulder pattern in play, we're probably going to go back to 119 in the next coming two weeks, and then after the two weeks are over, you see the market pull back after an earnings field rally, and of course bond markets will respond positively to that and break out of the upper channel of around 122. And uh, because of that, I still feel that uh, 
bond market is going to be a great place to keep your safety a or just just a great play on safety um, if you want to play if you want to be a little bit if you want to be on the safe side that could be what you can do stay inside the uh, go back into bonds. Let's go ahead and look at the next chart which is the crude oil market and you pretty much got this market uh, fi having us you know finding some support above the 20 day moving average but overall it seems like a feeble attempt. It might go a little higher but I honestly don't feel that confident in the crude oil market. I really can't recommend an upwards trade but I really can't say that it's a good idea to short it yet either. We don't have uh, a downwards confirmation on the short term. Over the midterm, though, we do have a short term downwards confirmation of around 87.42. So, give or take. Let's go ahead and examine the next thing that I'm going to point out, which is going to be this. And I'm thinking that this could be a cup pattern, or like I was mentioning earlier, an inverse head and shoulder. And a cup pattern is pretty much, yeah, this might be going down upwards and then it goes all the way down like that cup and then it goes all the way back and then breaks the previous resistance at around 92 so that's pretty much what I'm anticipating and uh, um, I kind of drew it wrong let me go ahead and extend that back up a bit yeah so you got that you got that going for you and uh, pretty much you guys get the basic idea that this could be a good cup pattern and um, because of that I, I anticipate uh, some I anticipate that this market will eventually have a major pullback once the stock market ends its rally and the dollar index finds support and rallies beyond the $82 level. I think it's the $82 level. Yeah, 80, yeah, $82 level. So let's go ahead and look at the next chart, which is going to be the McDonald's uh, chart. And McDonald's is a pretty interesting play. And um, pretty much first I have to explain to you what a call option is. Then I explain to you the benefits of the call option. So this is going to take a bit of some time. And, it's going to be more educational than anything. Uh, first of all, a call option is basically a way to make money uh, with added leverage. And basically, it's like giving, if you buy a call option at 75 strike, uh, it gives you the right to basically uh, buy it at 75 and sell it at 80 at a later date. And to give you an idea, we're going to go ahead and apply that situation into our trend or into our trade right now because I like McDonald's. But I don't think that there's I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of people that could uh, honestly buy this company at uh, at that high of a price. So what I'm going to have to say is, um, if you bear with me on this, you guys are going to get a basic idea of uh, how this is all going to come down and work. So um, first of all, a call option is a way to uh, get some extra leverage and uh, um, and pretty much you know what I'm anticipating what I'm actually gonna try and explain to you guys is a uh, call option is for example if this if if you pay a premium in our case we're paying a 71 cent premium per share or give or take 71 dollars for every hundred share and uh, what, what you're gonna get out of that is um, if you spend, uh, give or take, uh, seven, 710 bucks, you'll get access to around 1,000 shares. And 1,000 shares of McDonald's is pretty much worth, give or take, uh, give or take $75,000 as long as it's spot at the 75 strike. So uh, how, does a, how does a call option work? Well, pretty much there's a person that sells the call. So the call seller pretty much receives a premium per hundred share or per share and by receiving a premium they will they will basically take on the obligation of uh, buying it at the current market price and selling it to selling it at the strike price so for example in this case scenario let's say this person sells us uh, 10 naked calls 10 naked calls at 80 bucks okay so no, not 80 bucks but 10 naked calls at 75 strike okay Here's how it works. Call seller must buy at current market price within the expiration date. So let's say we bought February uh, call options, which would probably expire on February of 18th or something like that, 2011. So basically, let's say McDonald's finds its double topping pattern and we go up and, and the call goes up to around 80 bucks. Okay, so the call seller then must buy at $80 per share on McDonald's and turn around and sell it to us at $75. Okay, now that's the beauty of it because 
that is some super leverage. Uh, what happens, what, what's basically going on is that this guy has to go off and buy a uh, hundred shares of McDonald's at uh, pretty much at a hundred shares of McDonald's at 80 bucks. That's give or take uh, $8,000. And then they must turn around and sell it to us at $75. So that pretty much leaves them at a $500 loss. And we take those 100 shares and we go back to the market and say, hey, we're going to sell it at 80 bucks. So then we receive a $500 profit. Now let's say we did that with uh, 10 options contracts. That would give us $5,000 in profit when we only risk $710 on a trade. And that would give us a give or take uh, 600 to 700% return on investment on top of only risking because if you were to take on a thousand shares of McDonald's, do you know how much money that would cost you? That would cost you seventy-five thousand dollars just to earn five thousand dollars. In our case, we are using one thousand dollars to earn five thousand dollars. So that's the whole that's the whole idea behind the leverage. Now, because of that, I feel that there's a great opportunity to spend a little bit of money in this McDonald's trade and earn quite a bit more in form of leverage. Because of that, I recommend buying some call options, McDonald's, keep it a small position, 710 bucks, something within reason, something you could lose and have a great risk to reward on it while risking substantially less than what you would normally risk in a bigger trade. And because of that, that's and because of that, that's why I feel that a McDonald's call option trade is a very attractive opportunity. And I and I kind of and somebody pointed this out to me and I kind of looked back and I asked, "Well, why is this a trade he took on?" But I did, some, I did some digging and I realized that we got earnings coming out at McDonald's on around January 24, 2011, quarter four earnings. So there's going to be some hype baked into this market. And also you have this trend line all the way from September of 2009 going all the way up here and working as a support level. And this is very important because the longer the trend line, the more likely that that support level will actually hold. So for the amount of time we have, there's, there might be a great opportunity to go ahead and buy into McDonald's. We could anticipate a double topping pattern. And if it works out, great returns for those who go ahead and take on that type of risk. Do note, though, this is a pretty risky trade, but you can reduce the amount of risk by reducing the amount of money and making it so that you you got the odds in your favor. And in this case, you got the odds in your favor and you're not risking as much as $80,000 or $75,000 on a trade. You're only risking uh, 710 bucks. So that's what I recommend and I'll see you all next time. And please be sure to check out the link below this video to check, to check out the charting software I use. And uh, also please tell your friends on YouTube to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And if you're on Facebook, tell your friends on Facebook to add me on Facebook. All right. Thanks guys. And I hope to see you all next time. Bye.